Hello, good morning. It's my pleasure to welcome you on behalf of ERIAC at the webinar titled The Role of Artist Residencies in the Promotion of Roma Contemporary Art. And as we are gathering, I would like to remind you about some technical details that will enable you to use the translation during the, or interpreting function during the webinar. Uh, we provide um, uh, interpretation from uh, Hungarian to English in order to be able to to use the, to, to listen to all of us having conversation in English and use the interpretation that is provided for the participant who is Hungarian speaker, please go to the bottom bar of your uh, Zoom, uh, Zoom screen and click on the kind of like a globe sphere with, which has, uh, which is marked interpretation. And once you click on that, you are able to, um, use your language, in this case, uh, English, and also remember to click the function uh, mute original audio. And this will let you listen to the conversation with English with everyone's uh, contribution translated to English. So let's do this. Okay, so now I'm uh, in the in the right channel, and it is a big pleasure to welcome you at the ERIAX uh, webinar, the role of artist residencies of the promotion of Roma contemporary culture. Welcome everyone. Good morning. Thank you for your interest in joining our webinar and and connecting. The webinar is organized within the framework of WIF, a wide and European access to cultural communities via. Europeana and uh, network and uh, Roma Moma, which is the artistic uh, project of uh, ERIAC, European I Roma Institute for Arts and Culture. The project is also supported by the international membership engagement initiative supported by the uh, German government. And I will start by uh, introducing our panelists. And then we will move to the short presentation uh, on behalf of WIF, our main uh, supporter, and later we will uh, kick off the discussion. So on behalf of WIF, uh, we have uh, uh, Rosa Cisneros, who is a researcher, dancer, choreographer, sociologist, and curator, who works at the Center for Dance Research at the Coventry University, and additionally coordinates the WIF project, and she will soon uh, will be able to tell you more about it. Then we will have Angelika Stepken, who is curator and contemporary art, art scholar and director of the um, Villa Romana uh, in Florence since uh, 2006. Together with Timea Junghaus, she is uh, spiritus movens of this amazing initiative that we, are, we will be discussing today or taking it as a point of departure, the Villa Romana residence for uh, for Roma artists. And as I said, the second person uh, behind this trailblazing initiative is uh, Timea Junghaus, the executive director of uh, European Roma Institute for Arts and Culture since uh, 2017 and art historian and contemporary art curator. Uh, then we will have two uh, very special guests who happen to be fresh uh, veterans of the uh, Villa Romana Florence uh, residencies, Lubosz Kotlar, who uh, is a graduate of the Academy of Fine Arts and Design in uh, Bratislava, Department of Photography and New Media, who is active as photographer, artist, and also a curator and editor. And then uh, connecting from uh, Budapest, Hungary, Norbert uh, Olach, who is painter, um, graduate of the uh, Hungarian Uver University of Fine Arts and laureate of the Bela Gruber uh, Prize. And also additionally, uh, as I previously said, uh, former residence, uh, resident uh, of uh, Villa Romana, uh, artistic residency. Uh, we were also supposed, as you know, from announcements to have uh, Selma Selman with us, who unfortunately had to cancel her, her participation, and we wish her uh, 
quick recovery as, as, as she is not well and that's why she's not joining us. So without further ado, I'm uh, passing the mic to Rosa who will provide us with the uh, introduction to WIF. Rosa, the floor is yours. Thank you, thank you everyone. Good morning everyone um, here in the digital space and also those beyond watching us from Facebook. Uh, very happy to be here, um, very honored actually. I think this is a really important um, event and conversation and I'm really looking forward to learning from others. Um, for those that would like an audio description, I am a female sitting in a white uh, cream colored chair wearing a jumper that's a bit wintry, thicker material. I have all of skin tone, my dark hair is pulled up, and I'm wearing black earrings. Um, yes, I'm Rosa Cisneros and work at the Coventry University. Uh, I am coordinating activity one within the WEAVE project, which is looking at these lab days and also um, aggregating content. So I work very closely. Well, it's a smallish consortium and we work very closely together. With that, I think a picture is worth a thousand words. So I will share a very quick um, PowerPoint. Hopefully you can see this. Yes. I need to remember to go slow for the translators. I tend to speak with my hands and start to go fast, so please do remind me. Um, yes, WEAVE is a European funded project under the Connecting Europe Facility Program to enrich Europeana with great content of tangible and intangible cultural heritage. We are also developing new tools. The hope is to create more um, spaces that are egalitarian, that are looking at many communities and how those communities want to represent themselves within cultural heritage institutions. And so Europeana is a digital um, space, library, portal, it goes through various kind of um, names and descriptions um, that is holding over 50 million digitized items or objects. Um, I like this quote. I think it represents the, the values of Europeana, but also of the Weave project. And it says, and I quote, our mission is we transform the world with culture. We want to build on Europe's rich heritage and make it easier for people to use, whether for work, for learning, or just for fun, end quote. And that's Europeana's um, kind of mission and ethos, and that aligns a lot with us kind of from the project, but also as people. And I know myself being a member of the community, it really feels important that active, that rep representation of the various communities, but also the Roma community is as accurate and as diverse as possible. As I said, um, Europeana has links to different uh, organizations, museums, and they tell organ it is a space where um, educational material as well as um, different blogs and different ways to share and reshare that content exists. Within the Weave project, we are adding to Europeana, the various communities are adding to Europeana objects or content, and that can be audio files, images, videos. Um, and one of the other strands that we're doing within the project is looking at how we develop frameworks or thinking about um, encouraging other institutions or individuals or curators to also think about how we can look at our collections, look at the work we're doing and make it more inclusive, make it more diverse and also co-create and allow um, the, 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 the key stakeholders to influence and to um, shape the content we have. And so um, we're working with um, the cultural communities within the project are the Portuguese folk dance, um, the Castellers from Catalonia, we have the Roma community, we have early dance, historical dance, um, and also uh, dance more broadly, uh, and, and Slovenian castles and cultural buildings and monuments. We're developing tools to help 
look at that process. Um, but a key part of what we're doing is this lab day frameworks, which ha which is underpinned by a communicative methodology, which is looking at bringing in the people who are part of these communities to help shape the discussion. And so today is an example of that lab day. Indeed, it is online. It'd be wonderful if we could be space to space, uh, face and body to body, um, but that's not possible. But the idea is that we look at an issue look at what's happening and offer solutions or possible ways that we might um, move forward. Um, and it's directly coming from various voices and profiles of people coming together to look at that. And within Weave, we also have various capacity building, what we're calling capacity building cafes, but there's strands of, okay, what do we take from the learning from these lab days into this next step? What is the action? What is it that we can do as community members, as institutions, as universities? Um, and how do we move forward so that we can really take this learning and make something small or big? And so this is the consortium that is our website. As you can see, we're small but mighty in terms of our ambitions and um, what we're hoping to achieve. We've had over, I think, nine lab days already, three organized by ARIAC. So you can see we're quite active. Please do visit our website and reach out to us. We'd be very happy to reach uh, to speak with anyone. Thank you for um, this opportunity and I look forward to today's discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Rosa, for this great uh, introduction to WEAVE. We are very thrilled to have this cooperation as ARIAC, and as some of you might know, it's actually our third uh, so-called lab day uh, that we are organizing within this project, and we are really excited about this opportunity. So again, uh, welcome to everyone, because I saw that some people connected uh, during uh, Rosa's introduction. And I want to now uh, open the floor for a short presentation from our panelists. We will start with uh, Timea Junghaus and then Angelika uh, Stepken and move to, to Lubosz Kotler and uh, Norbert Orlach. So Timea, the floor is yours. Thank you, Katarzyna. Uh, hello, dear colleagues. Uh, welcome, dear audience. Uh, uh, I am Tima Junkos, the Executive Director of ERIAC, so I will speak from within uh, ERIAC about our experience, uh, our excitement and our uh, future imagination of uh, the collaboration with Villa Romana, and most importantly, uh, mention some of the greatest results of this amazing collaboration. Um, the European Roma Institute for Arts and Culture has a unique and single mandate as the transnational European level organization for the recognition of Roma arts and culture. And ERIAC is actually a joint initiative of the Council of Europe, the Open Society Foundations, and the Roma Leaders Initiative, the Alliance for the European Roma Institute for Arts and Culture. Uh, ERIAC started in 2017 in uh, Berlin, and uh, we also opened uh, our new art space and office in Belgrade this year in May. And we are waiting for the invitations of the other European and beyond European member states or states. Our mandate is uh, to increase the self-esteem of Roma and to decrease negative prejudice of the majority population towards the Roma by means of arts, culture, history, and media. The ERIAC sections uh, work in very specialized areas, and one of our strongest and most productive sections is actually the section of arts and culture, which is a membership section grouping together the most progressive, most uh, productive, uh, and most celebrated Roma creative producers and talents. But one of the founding principles, one of the core founding principles of ERIAC is highest quality standards in arts and culture. And to be honest, in 2017, when ERIAC was established, this was just another Roma organization, uh, another Roma nonprofit organization and association. So it took several years to get into the center 
of the art scene and contemporary art scene. And uh, I would date actually the arrival of ERIAC to this Im important principle of highest quality standards in arts and culture to 2019, to ERIAC's uh, uh, participation and supporting of the Futuroma exhibition in the Venice Contemporary Art Biennale, the Futuroma exhibition curated by Daniel Baker, which has 119,000 visitors. Uh, this is also the time when uh, we distilled the objective of the Roma Moma blog, the blog which prefiguratively imagines and performs a space which we understand as the Roma Museum. And we invite blog authors, we distill a Roma cultural theory, and we uh, promote existing art events around the globe uh, through the blog site and through the think tank activities. And we see how the Futuroma exhibition and the blog both uh, promoted and assisted this collaboration together with Villa Romana, since this was the first opportunity where Angelika Stepkin, the director of Villa Romana, came in contact with uh, the curator of Futuroma exhibition and invited the Futuroma exhibition to Villa Romana. But I leave the floor to Angelika to describe uh, her uh, impressions on the moment of conception and birth of this collaboration. Uh, I just uh, thought I mentioned that, uh, that this uh, collaboration for an artist residency is extremely core to ERIAC uh, in both identifying a transparent evaluation and screening process for finding new talent because a jury was formed, Maria Lind, Angelika Stepkin, Daniel Baker, and Eric Management together uh, call for the applications to this residency program. And, and the call for applications is uh, the greatest existing platform for us, Eriak, to find new Roma artists and talents, creative producers, even future curatorial talent, and this is where the strength and uniqueness and radicality of this cooperation lays. It is also important to say that we owe a huge thank you to Villa Romana because it is very difficult for the Roma cultural context to not think in project. And uh, Villa Romana was an invitation and was a project partner who saw beyond the project and aimed from the beginning for a longer term collaboration. And a longer term collaboration, which is not project minded, has a re real transformative impact on Roma arts and the future of Roma arts. And uh, last, but most importantly, we have to mention how the residency that we provided to the first artists, Robert Gabrish and uh, Magurjata Mirkatash, has uh, has hijacked their careers into amazing, uh, amazing heights. Uh, Robert uh, Gabris met several important curators uh, and also uh, had an opportunity to work with savvy contemporary. Uh, Gosha Mirga actually didn't end up going to Villa Romana, but I think the opportunity and the recognition of the award of the residency program already helped her visibility. And the same goes, uh, I believe, and I hope for Lubos Kotler, who's already as, is exhibited in our Belgrade space as an opening artist, and both uh, Norbert Ola was in our second exhibition of the Belgrade uh, area space. And I truly hope that we can assist the growth and the future and the recognition and promotion of Roma artists. Find, continue the finding of new talent and cast talent for the future for both art and curatorial uh, uh, talents. Uh, and, uh, and I think that uh, this uh, collaboration together with Villa Romana has a real transformative politics for the whole scene of Roma arts and culture. So, uh, I can only speak of, uh, you know, with the highest, uh, highest uh, uh, qualitative uh, uh, characteristics about uh, this collaboration so far, and we are very grateful for this opportunity, and we are extremely proud of what we have achieved and the artists who have, uh, who have brought us so much recognition also to area. Thank you, Katarzyna, and I pass the word.
Thanks so much, uh, Tima, for introducing us to this broader context and uh, information about how the idea of the residency fits into the broader vision and mission of ARIAC. And I think that now it will be extremely interesting to hear from the so-called mainstream institution and its director, uh, especially since this idea, as you said, in terms of providing long-term collaboration as opposed to this uh, unfortunate idea of project funding only and the very idea of of collaborating with the small institution like ERIAC came from uh, from uh, Villa Romana Florence and I think it would be great to hear from Angelica the rationale behind it and what uh, what you can uh, what you have learned as, as this kind of mainstream institution from working on such an unusual project so far. We can't hear you, Angelica, you are muted. If you could just, yeah. Now I thank again with voice <laughs> to all of you, Timia, Katarzyna, Rosa, and Andrea for organizing this um, talk and also for the physical resonances I got from your introductions. Um, I'm also happy to meet Lubos and Norbert so soon again, <laughs> who left the villa a few days or weeks ago. Um, I was a little, um, not shocked, but surprised when you called us a mainstream institution. <laughs> I know what it means or from which per perspective um, you say it. Um, I mean, Villa Romana is also a very small institution. It has a long history and maybe we show the first image and I introduce very briefly two minutes what Villa Romana is and then we speak about our cooperation in the past uh, two or three years. So Villa Romana is an artist residency, as there are many in the world. Um, the special history of the villa is that it was founded by artists for artists in 1905. So it has a very long history and it has a special profile um, during all the years beside the two um, periods of world wars when it was closed. Um, it was, I mean, even in its statutes, it does not speak about national criteria, although it is a German nonprofit association in Florence, Italy. And from the very beginning, it was dedicated to support strong young artists for their future careers, and also to give the support for non-mainstream positions, which maybe later ended up in writing art history. Um, here you just see the entrance door from the, uh, Via Senese. Um, the building is um, a house from uh, 19th century and we are able to host every year four Villa Romana Fellows, which are selected by a jury. They stay for 10 months and they have a flat and a studio. And unfortunately, although the villa is big, we cannot offer more studio spaces. So all guest artists, which we are inviting beside the fellows, um, just have a room on second floor and all opportunities to collaborate, to communicate, to share our program, to meet the other artists and to participate um, at all events. So beside the level of fellows, guest artists, there is a third level of activities and that's more or less a curatorial program uh, with exhibitions, with um, symposiums, with film screenings and so on. And Villa is a little um, situated outside the center, but you can reach the center in a 10 minutes walk. And we are very well connected, let's say, to the local regional community. So we are not, a, let's say, German island on the hill, but we are just a place for contemporary art in Florence relating to hopefully a 330 degree um, perspective. Um, maybe we go to the next image because um, until three years ago, our guest artists were mainly coming from the Mediterranean region. Um, that was my purpose from the very beginning to leave the old, let's say, North South idea of dialogue, uh, German Italy, but to understand also the place where we are in a 
historical context, in a wider context. And then it happened in 2000, I don't remember, 18 or 19, that I got a message uh, when the Roma archive, the Rom archive, was presented in Berlin at Akademie der Künste. And I was so curious, but I couldn't go there, that I immediately wrote to Isabel and Francisca, couldn't we present this wonderful initiative also in uh, Florence? And these are images, you see also Daniel Baker, um, where they presented it. Uh, Selma was there, Emilia Rigova was there, and uh, Laura Halilovic, uh, and that was a real, very beautiful, also with a good resonance on the spot, meeting with artists from Roma, culture, background, whatever. Um, then, I don't know if it was by chance, I saw the Futuroma exhibition in Venice, and I really fell in love immediately. <laughs> and I thought, well, the dimensions of the ex exhibition would fit so well in our exhibition space. And then with the help of Timea and Daniel, we succeeded uh, finally under all pandemic uh, problems to bring the exhibition uh, to Florence and opening it, uh, when was it, autumn last year. And last year was then also the first year with the Roma residencies, uh, having Robert and Gosha here. Gosha, now we go to the next image maybe. Yeah, that's still the Futuroma exhibition or some views uh, of the works in our space. Next. And next. That was, yeah. And that's the studio place you see um, the traces of uh, Robert's body on the, on the textile. Um, Robert Gabe stayed here for two months. Gosha, unfortunately, was already so busy with Berlin Biennial that she passed four weeks here. But we were really happy to, to get to know her, to, yeah, to have her with us. And we also planned to bring her back to Florence, but um, it did not yet work. Uh, so um, maybe just the next image scrolling through. Um, yeah, Robert, he, I think for him this day here was quite important because for some week he used the garden pavilion as a studio because as we said, we, as I said before, we do not have extra studio spaces. And there he succeeded from his whole career of drawing, going into the space and rehearsing uh, performative work. And uh, this work, I mean, that was during his residency, but then we invited him again this year uh, to exhibit it really as an exhibition for some weeks. And this exhibition was then curated by Elena Agudio from uh, Sabi, as Timia said before. Next. Yeah, there we are sitting uh, at the opening of uh, Robert's exhibition and we had a discussion about his work, about yeah, being Roma artist, being artist, what it means. Um, and that was also, I mean, maybe later we will talk about it. I think for the first uh, hour of this discussion, we did not mention the word Roma. We spoke about his art. And then at a certain point, um, we learned more about the background. Next. Yeah, that's Gosha in her studio preparing, I don't know if it was a work for the Berlin Biennial or others. Next. Next. And that was this year for Open Studios. Um, Lubas was already there. To, he arrived two days before. Norbert not yet, but he sent three of his paintings. And on the first Saturday of uh, September, we had the Open Studios back again after the pandemic uh, break last year. And uh, in the first room, it's hard to recognize, but there is a collaboration between uh, Kai and Lydia, former fellows who gave a kind of painting school for female artists together with the paintings of uh, Norbert. And, and in the very corner, what you see just as a black spot is a very wonderful uh, photographic work by Lubosch. And then there's, yeah, that was just a day trip to Niki de saint Fall um, garden. And on the way back, we had to eat the pizza on the floor because our restaurants were closed. And next and last photo, I think. Uh, yeah, that was um, only a few weeks ago, the final presentation of Norbert and uh, Lubosch's work. 
and in this period it was nice we had um, um, what is it, the volunteer Teodora Talos from Romania and uh, she prepared this presentation and she also followed their their work and their stay in uh, in Florence um, and I think one of the the effect of residencies beside of getting attention uh, supporting a career is also very strongly uh, creating new networks, new friendships, new collaborations. And I hope this will go on. I mean, the new call for uh, um, area presidency in uh, Villa Romana is now online. And we are waiting for the new guests next year. I must say for Villa Romana, it was really enriching um, to, to meet the persons, the people, but also to get to know something about Roma artists. And our purpose, I mean, when I started this collaboration, also Roma Archive and Kutu Roma, of course, had also the background that in Florence or in Italy, uh, the position of, or when, you, when people hear the word Roma, either they think about the capital or they think about the camps which violently have been evacuated. So there is a high level of discrimination and it it is and was important to show good Roma arts. And we also enjoyed very much that the cultural assessor of uh, Florence came for the opening. So there was a broad recognition for the artistic quality um, they were presenting. Thank you. Thank you so much, Angelica. I think that there were, there were several very important issues that you raised and we will definitely address them in the discussion. But before that, let's hear from the recent uh, graduates of Villa Romana. Lubos, will you go first, please? Sure, so first of all, thank you for having me, of course. And uh, yeah, I think we can actually go to the presentation. Uh, yeah, I have decided to talk a little bit about something that I've been working on for the last few months. And actually, this is the poster for an installation slash event slash performance, let's say, which took place uh, exactly two weeks ago in Bratislava, in a fallout shelter under Kostale Bratislava. It was an installation that actually uh, I have created uh, in collaboration with a lot of other artists. I will tell you a little bit more about it, but also it was created in uh, in close collaboration with Kunsthalle Bratislava and Off Festival Bratislava and also uh, uh, not Bratislava, I don't know how to translate it one. And it was supported by uh, Foundation of the City of Bratislava and also by Slovak Arts Council. So the thing is that uh, the project is called Nowlessness. This was Act 3 and uh, the name was It's Getting Hot In Here. Uh, it is a project, this nowlessness that I've been working on uh, more or less since 2017, and uh, it is always created in a very collaborative way. Uh, this time uh, I was also collaborating with the curator uh, Eric Willem, so we were both kind of curating the thing, and also uh, I've been creating uh, some artworks in collaboration with other artists, and also we invited other artists to collaborate uh very briefly the conceptual core of the project is actually in the queer theory and more or less in the concepts of queer time and queer space if i want to explain it queer time refers basically to uh temporality and kind of uh it denies the future and at the same time therefore it is talking about kind of like an overexposed present moment so what we are doing in this project is that we are taking these concepts from the queer theory and we are trying to use them to describe uh concepts such as climate change and anthropocene and stuff like that so we are trying to look for, from the queer perspective on much wider uh the situation that we are going through as the society basically so if we go to the next image yeah this is actually the daguerreotype that uh, Angelica showed that uh, I installed in Villa Romana during Open Studios. It is a daguerreotype. Uh, I will explain very briefly what is daguerreotype. Daguerreotype is 
a historical photographic technique that actually comes from the 19th century. It was more or less the, let's say the first photographic technique. It was not the very first, but it was the first that was actually uh, claimed by scientific uh, public that, okay, now we do have photography. And uh, this one is very small. It's like four by five inches. And it's a brass plate that is covered in with silver. And uh, then the plate itself is actually what you put into the camera and it is the only original, like, like you cannot reproduce it. And uh, the thing about the garotypes is actually that you uh, have to uh, polish the, the surface of the plate until it's really mirror-like. So it means that this is a scan. So you only see the positive image, how it should look like. But in the end, uh, you see that the garotype always a kind of different. It depends on the reflection. If you see the image or if you don't, if you see positive or if you see negative. So this one I have created, let's say solo, uh, but in collaboration, in, in technical collaboration with another artist from Spain. Uh, and his name is Joaquin Pata de Spiris. If you go to another, image yeah this is the tapisserie that we created in collaboration with textile designer Daniela Danielis she's based in Prague but also works in Slovakia the thing is that uh, we were working with kind of uh, a combination of old techniques new technique and stuff she's working a lot with hand weaving and actually she is the leader of several initiatives that wants to re recontextualize uh hand weaving into like present moment for present viewers uh and uh what we did is actually we printed digitally an image on the vertical threads and then uh, she was hand weaving it and uh, the picture actually became distorted and kind of uh, almost vanished. If we go to another slide, this is from the installation in the fallout shelter also in combination with the performative act that went there. Actually, the very important uh, thing is that the event took part only for three hours, which was so something that we, that, that we wanted so it's yeah I said it's also uh, performative always and if we go to the next image yeah this is also from the installation and the next one yeah this is the video that we created in collaboration with actually several artists because I was creating di uh, creative directing this video but the uh, I created it in collaboration with 3D artist uh, Paula Malinowska with editor Vladimira Verbiniakova uh, with the musician Nike Vols, with the dramaturg uh, Katarina Cechkova and so on. So basically well, why I'm showing these images is that <laughs> because I was creating these things in collaboration, let's say the tapisserie and the video, it is something that I was actually working a lot from uh, Florence. The thing is that I was working on them only remotely. So yeah, the video actually is something over five minutes. So we are not able to show it here uh, during the live stream, but I was sad that actually we can send the link to it because it's online and you can actually watch it later if you want. So yeah. Thanks, uh, Lubos. I saw that there was a question in the in the chat about the name of uh, the Garotypist, uh, the Joaquin. You said. Yeah, I can actually uh, send it somewhere to the chat. Okay, or... you, can, you can just type it in in the sure. chat because someone was uh, asking about it. It sounds okay. that you had really busy time in in Villa Florence, even if the work was uh, done remotely. Uh, it is really uh, very inspiring. Uh, congratulations on that. And we hope that the fruits of the of the Florence, uh, your stay in Florence will, you know, provide uh, inspiration and uh, uh, for us for a long time. And let's uh, now move to uh, Norbert Ola, so he can tell us about uh, what Florence gave him. Robert? 
Sok szeretettel köszönök, köszöntök mindenkit, és nagyon örülök ennek a, a lehetőségnek, ennek a megszólalásnak. Nagyon röviden szeretnék bemutatkozni. Hoztam pár, pár munkát, nem sokat, az időrövidsége miatt egy dolgot szeretnék megmutatni a, azok közül, amik, amikkel foglalkozom. Én, én leginkább festőművészként identifikálom saját magam, konceptuálisan gondolkodom, de leggyakrabban a hagyományos médiumokhoz nyúlok. Ez azért van, mert, mert elsősorban én a művészetet egy intellektuális műfajnak tartom, de számomra a szenvedélyességét a, a, a manualitás és, a, és az érzékiség adja, és amikor művészetről beszélünk, én szeretek nagyon tárgyilagosan és érthetően beszélni, de, de a valóság az, hogy egy borzasztóan szentimentális módon élem meg a, a, a művészlétet. Amit most látnak reprodukciókat, ezek, ezek egy sorozat részei, amik Budapest 8. kerületéről szólnak. A Budapest 8. kerülete az egészen az elmúlt évtizedig volt a, volt a, a, a városnak a rossz környéke. Egy ilyen, egy ilyen gettó jellege volt, nagyon rossz hírű volt a környék, egy ilyen, most direkt, direkt mondom, ilyen megbélyegző módon, mert ez volt a, 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 a jellegzetesség a nyolcadik kerületnek, hogy egy ilyen, egy ilyen cigány környékként ismerték a, az elmúlt évtizedek során. Közben rengeteg-rengeteg kulturális javat felhalmozott a, a kerület az elmúlt idők során, és nagyon-nagyon nagyon izgalmas kulturális élet folyt itt mindig. Az elmúlt időkben elindult egy gentrifikáció, és elkezdett átalakulni egy ilyen, egy ilyen alternatív, szubkulturális művész negyedé. Megkérem Andrát, hogy közben lapozzunk a a többi képre is. Szóval én elkezdtem foglalkozni a, ezekkel, a, ezekkel, a, ezekkel a terekkel, és uh, szerettem volna elkerülni, hogy, uh, hogy egy ilyen tárgyasító, szociológiai nézőpontot um, adjunk uh, ennek a ennek a kerületnek, mert, mert ez nagyon-nagyon klisészerűen működik a, a kultúrában, meg a nyolcadik kerület reprezentációjában. Ezért én elkezdtem a, a terekkel, az utcákkal, a háztetőkkel, a tűzfalakkal foglalkozni. Szerettem volna elkerülni azt, hogy, hogy, hogy nyomort ábrázoljak. Ezért a ezért fordultam a, a, a városi térnek a, a látványa felé. Emellett, emellett van bennem egyfajta realista törekvés is, ami azt jelenti, hogy, hogy első látásra, első látásra érdektelen, meg köznapi, látványú objektumokat mutassak be, ami a, a festészet vagy bármely vizuális leképezés segítségével érdekessé válik. Én megkérem, hogy lapozzunk közben még tovább. Többi képre. Nagyon-nagyon jellegzetesek a, a városban ezek a, ezek a tűzfalak, 
meg ezek az üres, üres telekrészek, ahol lebontottak egy épületet, és feltárul a szomszédos épületnek a, a, a belső um, szerkezete. Úgy mondanám, hogy az épület testének a, a húsa. És, um, és ez um, egy, egy festő szemének, vagy egy vizualitásban gondolkozó ember szemének ez um, rengeteg, um, rengeteg um, lehetőséget ad, vagy rengeteg inspirációt ad. Meghoztam néhány döntést ezeknél a festményeknél. Amiket most látunk festményeket, ezek elég nagy méretű festmények, ilyen két-három méter szélességű, különböző technikával elkészített festményekről van szó. Meghoztam például azt a döntést, hogy, hogy nem festem meg az égboltot, nem festek vetett árnyékot. Egy ilyen hiperrealista módon a festmény minden egyes részére ugyanakkor a, ugyanakkor a energiát fordítok, ugyanolyan részletességgel fogalmazom meg minden pontját a, a látványnak. Ezt azért szeretném így csinálni, azért fontos, hogy ez így legyen, hogy, hogy ne egy adott időpillanatot, ne egy impressziót ö, mutassunk, ö, mutassak be, hanem, ö, hanem egy, ö, egyfajta általánosságot, a kerületnek egyfajta általános arculatát ö, láttassam, és, ö, és azok az emberek, akik ö, ismerik ezt a környéket, vagy akik ö, akik jártak már ezen a, ezen a környéken, azok egyfajta um, rokonságot, vagy egyfajta nosztalgiát um, éreznek ezek, ezekkel a festményekkel kapcsolatban. Mert hát ez a, ezek azok az utcák, ahol, ahol járnak minden nap, ez az otthonuk, vagy ez a, itt van a munkahelyük, um, vagy itt vannak azok a kulturális terek, amik számukra, számukra fontosak és eddig csak a perifériás látásukban szerepeltek ezek a látványok, de így egy festményen megfogalmazva a, ezeknek, a, ezeknek a városrészeknek a, a valódi szépsége az a, az a, az a szemünk elé tárul. Én úgy érzem, hogy most fogom lezárni éppen ezt a, ezt a korszakot. Öt éve festem a nyolcadik kerületet, teljesen hozzám nőtt. Egy ilyen, egy ilyen lokálpatrióta vált belőlem, és a, és a nyolcadik kerületnek a, a szerves részévé váltam az itt élő emberekkel, az itt működő szervezetekkel együttműködve. Most viszont úgy érzem, hogy... Hogy, hogy muszáj váltanom. Azt gondolom, hogy egy festőnek, egy művésznek legyenek korszakai, és úgy érzem, hogy most jött el az a pillanat, amikor, amikor elég festmény. Nagyjából olyan 250 festmény született az elmúlt 5 év alatt különböző méretben, az egyéb projektek mellett, és, és most szeretnék új témákat keresni. A tervem az, hogy, a, hogy januártól fél évre elmegyek Máltára, ott, ott naplót szeretnék írni, részletesen szeretném dokumentálni az elmúlt öt évet, és a következő tervem pedig az, hogy, hogy elköltözök Londonban. Ehhez éppen most keresek támogatókat, el szeretnék költözni Londonba egy, egy időre, legalább egy évre, és, a, és az ott letelepedett, a Brexit után lepelet, letelepedett kelet-európai bevándorlókról szeretnék festeni egy, egy sorozatot. Ez lesz a következő nagy téma, amivel szeretnék foglalkozni. Még egy pár szót mondanék a... a a firenzei ösztöndíjról, a firenzei ott tartózkodásról. 
Kettő dolog miatt is borzasztóan fontos számomra ez, a, ez az ösztöndi. Az egyik, hogy, hogy Olaszországgal, Toszkánával akaratlan módon kialakult egy, egy, egy viszonyom. Valahogyan mindig van egy, egy elhívás Olaszországban. Én ezelőtt két évvel részt vettem egy hasonló rezidencia ösztöndíjon Toszkánában, egy kis faluban, a, a Kahan Art Space-nek a, az ösztöndíjával. Ott eltöltöttem két hónapot, és most megint, megint Firenzében találtam magam. Nagyon remélem, hogy még sok alkalommal látogathatom meg ezt a vidéket, mert, mert úgy érzem, hogy egyre, egyre otthonosabban mozgok Olaszországban. A másik, ami miatt nagyon fontos, az pedig az, pedig az amit, amit Timea és Angelika elmondtak a, a bemutatójukban. Egyrészt óriási lehetőséget biztosít ez számunkra a, a, a szakmai kapcsolatoknak a, a kiépítésére, egyáltalán, egyáltalán az utazásra, ami mindig egy mindig egy nagy öröm, szerintem minden, mindenki számára. Illetve, illetve én, én, én úgy érzem, hogy, hogy megismerve Lubost, és megismerve Teodórát, egy, ez, egy, ez egy barátság kezdete, és, és érzem azt, hogy kialakult köztünk egy, egy kölcsönös szakmai tisztelet is. Én még nem találkoztam Robert Gábrissal, de felvettük egymással a, egymással a kapcsolatot, követjük egymás munkáit, és, és bár nem találkoztunk személyesen, és különböző időpontokban voltunk jelen, de, de nagyon-nagyon megtisztelő, hogyha, hogyha a távolból is a figyelmet, figyelmet fordítanak így a, a, a művészek egymásra, és kialakul egy ilyen, egy ilyen kollegialitás. És azt hiszem, hogy abban reménykedek, hogy a, hogy a, hogy a jövőben lesz majd a lehetőségünk még együtt tölteni időt, és, és együtt gondolkodni, együtt dolgozni. Um, I, I need, um, That's a great uh, way to to summarize uh, the talk about uh, residency, and yet we are just about to start the conversation. But it was super interesting, Norbert, to uh, be taken for this uh, trip through the rooftops of Budapest and learn that being in uh, Florence for, uh, for such a uh, short time made you produce already all these travels travel plans. So I think that probably people who were fans of your Budapest work might be uh, sorry that you were abandoning this amazing topic, but we are also looking forward to seeing Florence pictures. I hope you made some. Let us move now to the discussion. Uh, I think that uh, in all these presentations, there were uh, things that we were planning to, to ask you anyway, uh, starting with, um, this question that I think first... um, amikor, a, amikor a David Hackney egyik kedvenc festőművészem újra elkezdte a, a kollázsait, a fotókollázsait csinálni, akkor számon kérték, hogy, hogy hát ő korábban azt mondta, hogy ő, ő ezt lezárta, ezt a korszakot, és, és már befejezte ezt a sorozatot, és akkor azt mondta, hogy egy festőművésznek sosem szabad elhinni azt, amit mond. Lehetséges, hogy még visszatérek a nyolcadik kerülethez, csak egy, egy időre, időre hagyom el. Super, thank you. <clears throat> Thanks for this clarification. Definitely, it seems that uh, the Villa Romana provided a lot of inspiration to everyone. 
And uh, to start a small discussion, um, I would like actually to um, bring an, a text that I somehow uh, keep thinking about in the context of our uh, Roma Moma blog, the text that uh, uh, celebrates uh, 50th uh, anniversary uh, this year. And it has nothing to do with um, artistic residency, but definitely it does have to do with this issue of a little bit positive action and the issue of access to certain institutions and resources. And the text I have in mind is uh, Linda Nocklin's uh, Why uh, Have There Not Been uh, Great Women Artists? Or Why Have There Been No Great Women Artists? So my question would be just to paraphrase it a little bit and ask about uh, Roma, Roma artists, what about them? Uh, do um, residencies like uh, Villa Romana Florence support uh, as to, to humanity to see more uh, and to appreciate more uh, artists coming from uh, from uh, art coming from Roma artists. And as um, Angelica was saying uh, when she was describing the uh, exhibition of uh, Robert Gabrisch, she mentioned that first of all during the talk with the artist, the Roma world was not even mentioned for a long time. And then she also said that the objective was to produce to show, uh, to exhibit good Roma art. And this is very much in line with the ARIAC mission from the very beginning to promote the excellence. And by showing the excellence of Roma artists also achieve some additional uh, political goals. But in the context of um, residency, which is a very specific uh, tradition of uh, uh, supporting artists and is related with this uh, access to resources. Now, of course, we also have um, institutional um, way of supporting, but originally it was very much coming from private uh, people who were rich and had this idea of uh, nurturing uh, artistic production sometimes for their own goal. Angelica was mentioning that uh, Villa Romana was originally funded, funded in 1905 when there was this trend of creating this kind of bucolic uh, atmosphere and bringing artists to Tuscany and were not to uh, to provide them with inspiration in terms of uh, uh, of uh, this issue of access, apart from uh, quoting or far, uh, far paraphrasing Linda Nocklin, I would also like us to think a little bit about this uh, piece from um, Mladen uh, Stilinovic, uh, artist from uh, former Yugoslavia, who has this work. I don't know if you might be familiar, but I think it is very relevant in, uh, in this conversation. The, uh, art, uh, the artwork that is actually the slogan that says an artist who cannot speak English is no artist. And we often uh, ponder with this question also in ARIAC that is transnational and very international uh, organization that we are sometimes confronted with the question is Roma who does not speak English even a Roma? Can we really promote this person? Can we work with this person? And that's why it's also a great pleasure to work with, work with organizations like WEAVE that support this inclusivity uh, and uh, that thanks to support from WIF, we, for example, can have uh, this webinar currently only supporting two languages, but it would be possible to, to have more if this kind of diversity was, uh, was necessary. So I just want to kick us uh, out of these two questions about the, the access, and uh, maybe we could just again go in round unless there is someone who wants to, to, who wants to start with a very urgent comment. If not, I will just start calling names and I, Angelica, will you go? Thank you. You are muted. Okay. Now, just on the idea of access, I mean, the access to residencies is very different from place to place. Um, even the Villa Romana Prize is not accessible on an it's not open access, but candidates have to be proposed. So each uh, place had its profile, but I think there are so many, many, many residencies in 
Europe, in Germany and abroad, it is also about an exchange of information. Of course, we curators and so have to get to know artists in a more most um, non-white way. Um, but on the other hand, maybe also um, give all the information about these networks to your Roma community of artists. Uh, I mean, there are many places where you can apply if you are a good artist. No. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, on, on that note around access and, um, you know, being inclusive, I think it's, it's, it's a, of terms that are very kind of fluid and that we have to constantly keep reflecting on and thinking about what does inclusivity mean um, and how do we accommodate our spaces, virtually the physical ones, um, you know, how is it that we might include uh, people with different accessibility needs, with disability, either physical or mental ones, um, but also, you know, there might be needs in terms of women or parents with kids and caring and how do we kind of think about these spaces um, to accommodate or to be a bit more flexible for that and you know I know often you know especially within the Roma community we have our children our families are central to a lot of what we're doing and how if it does it might not always but if it is coming into our work and our practice how do we allow or create residencies that can also support some of that in some way um, and I know that personally that's been very helpful for me as a, a mother with a young child I brought my baby with me and if that if I didn't have that support from that residency I wouldn't have made that work and I probably wouldn't have been given other opportunities to explore a b and c so you know those key moments and that flexibility was really helpful in my personal and I just see how also the organizations can benefit from that different way of working. Um, so I offer that. Thank you. Timea, I see that you are ready. Yes, uh, thank you. Also, Katarzyna, thank you for uh, the inspiration. All of you, thank you for the inspiration, but especially mentioning Linda Nochlein, looping back to Virginia Woolf with the room of one's own necessary for creativity. And also uh, you inspired me to view this from a very Roma perspective, because what we achieved uh, with Villa Romana is that uh, uh, we uh, approach two very important uh, Roma uh, components of our identity uh, and inspired artists to actually not get another room of their own, but live the drum. The drum, the Romani road, uh, is, uh, is, and I'm quoting this from our Romani Chibro language exhibition. So I'm quoting a Roma definition for what it means to have the drum, the journey. And it is a long and often difficult process of personal change and development, which also happens during moving or being on the road, on the, ro on the drum. So I believe that uh, we inspired our artists uh, to be able to imagine their drum as this process of personal development. And we created a process that puts a uh, uh, expectations and pressures on the context uh, to live the drum. And another uh, such, uh, uh, another such uh, notion that I would like to bring to this discussion is actually uh, the notion of the Mahala, our neighborhood, our network. So the Villa Romana residency is also an opportunity for us, uh, for the artists to imagine the principle of neighborhood the neighborhood uh, for Roma, the Mahala means a condition of sharing, loving attitudes and interests in the common. So uh, exactly what Angelica described as, uh, as an important diversity a component of Villa Romana and the contemporary art scene to find uh, a high quality Roma art. Uh, and exactly what Rosa described with inclusion ideas, 
we incent the Roma artists to leave the mahalla, the settlement, the neighborhood, as it is in the Roma definition, building a new network of support and love uh, for their personal life. Uh, I'm really sorry for the far away uh, uh, inspiration. It is because of Katajina's uh, uh, introduction to the discussion, but also it's a very nice result uh, of the ARIAC exhibition that we are able to bring these definitions from Roma identity, from the notions of Roma identity to other discussions. I also would like to say that uh, I, think I already see that, uh, that we uh, achieved uh, artists uh, traveling and participating other residencies. Uh, of course, artists even without us uh, grow, so I don't want to appropriate these growths of artists participating dad, uh, dad uh, residencies, Visegrad residencies. Uh, so the dynamics of the art scene is perhaps changing and hopefully we will also have uh, some uh, growth in the areas of curatorial activities as well, because we really need uh, brilliant Roma curators who will also take care of this uh, highly debated notion of the future of Roma art. Thank you, Timur, to bring it to this very, very high level, but I think that placing it in this context and uh, using uh, both Drum and Mahala to, uh, to reframe uh, this uh, concept of mainstream residency for, the, for, for Roma is, uh, is really great. And I'm just wondering if uh, there are two options, basically, either we can go uh, like to the lower level, we are we have a lot of practical questions and also we can open the floor to, to our participants, but I also want to hear from Lubosz and Norbert, so without uh, like uh, pressuring you, you can choose if you want to uh, continue on this uh, very, uh, very poetic level that Angelika and uh, Timea and uh, Rosa said, or you can go more to practicality and tell, the, just react on, uh, in, the, in terms of describing your uh, experience with, with this re residency, what are your thoughts about like what uh, residences, how re we could make residences better, etc. Okay, so actually, honestly, I already kind of lost context, but I think the that the question was in the very beginning, right? Like uh, if the residencies can promote Roma artists and so on and so on. Of course, of course. I mean, what is the question even? It's great. And actually the funniest thing for me was that uh, while I was in Florence in Villa Romana, everybody was asking me, you know, of course, like, hey, who are you? What are you doing here? Where are you from? And so on. And when I told all the people like, you know, yeah, you know, um, Roma, I'm here because I actually there is a partnership with Ariak and stuff like that, but I come from Bratislava and so on. People were amazed. It was really like, oh my God, so exotic, you know? So there is this notion of like, you know, really a positive discrimination or something like that, because I mean, it is kind of funny, you know, I'm thinking about it my, myself, you know, like how I actually feel about it. I mean, I was even thinking about how I feel about being chosen to to go to Villa Romana. I mean, of course, there is this opportunity, so I'm taking it, of, of, of course, because it was amazing. But on the other hand, you know, when we are talking about discrimination and like uh, the institutions and so on, to be very honest, it's so funny for me that uh, many times I do not feel being discriminated for being Roma and I also identify as queer and so on. But on the other hand, I feel like many times I am being chosen for being Roma and queer and so on. And this is also something that I don't know how I feel about it, you know, because even when Angelica said that I really liked that when uh, Robert was exhibiting in Villa Romana, like being Roma wasn't really a question, but we were talking about the artwork and so on. Uh, yeah, I uh, actually, from my perspective, that would be kind of the best possible way to talk about art, you know, just to, I'm not saying that we should completely uh, just separate the artwork and the person creating it, the artist and so on. I mean, we don't have to do that, but wouldn't it be just, you know, amazing to just talk about the artworks themselves many times. Thank you. Um, 
hozzászólnék én is ehhez a részhez, mert, mert, mert vannak gondolataim. Idén az Off Biennálén Budapesten, ahol, ahol együttműködő partner volt az Eriak is, az egyik részlege ennek az Off Biennálénak a, a Roma Moma szekció volt, ahol én, ahol én bemutattam egy, egy installációt, egy köztéri installációt, amely egy nagy téglafal volt, a volt Roma Parlament ö, ö, épületének a bejáratát befalasztam az édesapámmal együtt. Ezekre, ezekre a téglákra szavak voltak írva, és ehhez tartozik egy, egy szöveg is, a cigányművész szorongása címmel. Ö, nem mesélem el részletesen, mert az Eriáknak a, a hollapján megtalálható a szöveg is, és a, az installációnak és az ahhoz kapcsolódó performance-nak a dokumentációja is. Ez az egyetlen egy mű, amivel én a, a származásommal foglalkozok. Ezen kívül én nem, direkt módon nem fogalmaztam meg soha a cigány származásomat semmilyen műben, és leírtam, a, leírtam a, ebben a szövegben, hogy, hogy milyen helyzetbe kerül a művész, milyen, milyen, milyen problémákkal, milyen skatujákkal, milyen berögződésekkel találkozik. Nagyon érdekes számomra az, hogy, hogy találkozok egy másik művésszel, egy hozzám hasonlókorú másik művésszel a szomszédos országból, és, és ugyanazokról a gondolatokról és ugyanazokról a tapasztalatokról számol be. És beszélgettünk erről Lubossal, és azt hiszem, hogy nagyon hasonló véleményem vagyok. Ez az egyetlen egy mű, amiben én, én megfogalmaztam, mert úgy éreztem, hogy ki kell írnom magamból, és, és meg kell fogalmazni, hogy, hogy mit gondolok erről, hogy innentől kezdve világos legyen, és hagyj foglalkozzak nyugodtan tovább azzal, amivel, amivel, amivel szeretnék. Tehát ugye ez egy ilyen statement most már a, a, az elkövetkezendő időkre vonatkozólag. Még, még egy valami itt, a, egy, egy kult szóval itt foglalkoznék, a, a pozitív diszkriminációval. Ez egy nagyon-nagyon fontos kult szó. Egyfelől azt gondolom, hogy hogy ott beszélhetünk pozitív diszkriminációról, ahol van negatív diszkrimináció. Szóval abban, a, abban az esetben merül fel csak, hogy, hogy ugyan jó-e a pozitív diszkrimináció, amikor azoknak a csoportoknak az esetében merül ez fel, amik negatívan vannak diszkriminálva. És szerintem én, én számomra ott, ott van egy nagyon-nagyon éles választóvonal, hogy én egy bizonyos támogatási rendszerben hogyan érzem magam. Én, én általában az önérzetemre hallgatok. A, szerencsére én úgy érzem, hogy van egy, van, egy, van, egy, van egy belső mérleg, ami mindig eldönti azt, hogy, hogy mi az, amiben én szívesen veszek részt, és mi az, amiben nem veszek részt szívesen. Mondok például egy példát. Amikor a képzőművészeti egyetemre jelentkeztem, akkor a, a felvételi rendszerben volt egy olyan lehetőség, hogy egy mezőt beixelek. Magyarországon van egy olyan kategória, hogy hátrányos helyzetű, halmozott a hátrányos helyzetű, ami vonatkozik arra, hogy nagycsaládos, a szülőknek az anyagi keresetére sok mindent jelent ez, de van ez a hátrányos helyzetű kategória, és hogyha ezt beixedi az ember, akkor plusz 20 pontot kap. Annyit kap, mint egy nyelvvizsgáért. És én nekem eszembe nem jutott, eszembe nem jutott ezt beixelni, véletlenül sem xeltem be, mert hogyha pont ezen a 20 ponton múlott volna a bekerülésem, én szégyeltem volna magam. Hogy nem azért kerültem be, mert egyébként elég jónak bizonyultam, vagy elég értékesnek bizonyultam, hanem azért, hogy 
egy ilyen kegyelem ajándéknak éreztem volna, volna ezt, a, ezt a plusz 20 pontot. Ennek ellenére közé tették a, a rangsort, és én a, az összes felvételiző között a második helyen szerepeltem, és nem számított volna a 20 pont, nem kellett, hogy beixeljem. Nagyon-nagyon fontos számomra az, hogy ne érezzem magam egy áldozatnak. Nem szeretném egy áldozati pozícióban láttatni magam, de, az is, de arról is fontos beszámolni, hogy, 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 hogy vannak, a, vannak ezeknek olyan, ezeknek a, ezeknek a viszony, viszonyoknak vannak olyan vonatkozásai, ahol, ahol, ahol különböző eséllyel indulnak el emberek. Hiába élünk egy jogegyenlőségben, esélyegyenlőség az, az nem biztosított, és nagyon jó, hogyha vannak olyan, nagyon, vannak olyan programok, ahol, ahol ezek kiegyenlítik. De én, én az eriek esetében még csak ezt sem érzem. Az eriek esetében ennél az ösztöndíjnál azt érzem, hogy van egy, van egy, egy konkrét művészeti program, van egy, van egy értékrendszer, és, és egy szervezetet látok, ami biztosít fiatal művészeknek lehetőséget ösztöndíjra, meg, meg megszólalási lehetőséget is ad. Én nem érzem például hogy Magyarországon, hogy a, hogy a lengyelek, mondjuk a lengyel intézetben, vagy a bolgárok a, a bolgár intézetben, hogyha megkapják az ösztöndíjaikat és a támogatásaikat, akkor, akkor fejüket le kéne hajtaniuk, hogy, hogy most ők pozitív diszkriminációban részesültek. Ez egy teljesen normális támogatási mód Európában szerintem nem különbözik, nem, nem különbözik egyéb más helyzetektől. Thank you, Norbert. Thank you for sharing. Uh... All of this uh, very personal details. I, I think it really fits very well to the discussion and definitely provides a lot of uh, food for thought. I'm not sure if we will be able to uh, now uh, deliberate more about this super interesting issue of uh, positive action and especially how ERIAC is a very special uh, Roma led uh, and Roma serving organization can, can situate uh, itself. Uh, around around this issue because we we have only uh, 10 minutes left i want to make sure uh, that uh, the audience is aware that uh, there is a possibility to use the q a box to ask questions and uh, since there are no uh, open questions now let's just let us just uh, wait but definitely neither and i i know that there, there people actually are aware because our uh, chat box was used for communication so uh, assuming that there are no uh, questions i just uh, definitely want to remind everyone and this is something that angelica mentioned uh, and was posted in the chat box that our current um, Uh, open call for applications for uh, Roma artists uh, for uh, Villa Romana residence is open till uh, January 16. And uh, I, I think that uh, Lukos made it sound very easy. Actually, I applied, I got it, I went for that. Actually, it is a highly competitive uh, process and uh, jury often uh, struggles to, to pick uh, the right candidates because there is like a huge interest and we are really super grateful for, uh, for um, uh, Villa Romana and Angelika Stepken for uh, enabling uh, ERIAC to be able to 
to support the uh, Roma uh, excellence in art in this way. I just want to uh, give floor to uh, Timea, the director of ARIAC, for the last word and goodbyes. Um, thank you, Katarzyna. Uh, I am not sure actually that I qualify for the last words at this moment because um, there were so many diversing ideas and discussions and feelings in this, uh, and the time was extremely short for us. So all I would like to say that this is uh, just, uh, uh, I don't know, a small uh, uh, highlight from the deep discussion that we can have about what artistic uh, residencies can do in order to identify new talent and assist the careers of Roma artists. And uh, how from the perspectives of, uh, of institutions, uh, this can accelerate the politics, the radicality and the progressive uh, qualities of uh, Roma self-expression. And this is extremely important because we do all seem to uh, speak about uh, art as our uh, ultimate uh, objective when we work in the field of contemporary arts and culture. And in order to really uh, transform the scene and generate really good quality art, uh, we need to work in collaboration. We need to listen, do good listening towards our artists. Uh, uh, and, uh, and minority institutions, and we need radical institutions who have a mindset for radical politics, for high quality arts, and for the inclusion of minority perspectives. I hope I satisfy your expectations for the last words. Maybe a thank you to all the participants is also due from ARIAC's behalf. And thank you so much, Katarzyna, for the excellent moderation and to Etelka for the work on translation, also from ARIAC. Also for all the participants uh, in the audience and our amazing panelists. It really was such a great conversation. Additionally, to Weave and Rosa for, for your unconditional support and uh, great ideas and helping us to uh, conceptualize uh, those events. It's such a pity that it's the last one of the series. And I just want to say, uh, you might be familiar with this mechanism that when the event is about to close, someone comes with like a very important and deep question and of course now when we are closing wrapping up there is a question uh, from uh, Facebook um, that someone published but since we don't have time to uh, go into this question I will just do some uh, advertising and uh, promotion of our Romamama blog the uh, entries from uh, Lubosz and Norbert the invitations were sent they kind of said uh, yes to my invitation to contribute to the to the the blog. So we will uh, definitely publish their ideas about uh, this topic. I hope that maybe also uh, soon we will be able to host uh, Angelika as an author uh, on this blog, uh, talking about uh, this experience of collaborating with uh, ARIAC. And as a very final word, I just want to again mention that on our website, you can see the open call that is now very open till uh, January 16. You can apply or tell your uh, friends who qualify to apply as uh, ERIAC does uh, do the positive action and the call is open for Roma artists. Only everyone is invited to apply. Thank you so much. Have a great day and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.